Hey, what's up, everybody, man? So Jonathan Taylor was one of the best running backs out of this draft class last year. And in my opinion, I feel like he was the best running back out of the draft class last year, despite dudes like Clyde Edwards Hilaire and DeAndre Swift being in the same class and going ahead of him. So since the Colts saw that Jonathan Taylor was still on the board, they traded up to pick Jonathan Taylor in the second round and the rest is history. I even made a video Pretty much to letting everybody know why the Colts decided to trade up and get Jonathan Taylor considering they already had Marlon Mack on the roster. And basically, they just needed better. And that's exactly what he did for his rookie season. He went out there, ran the ball 232 times for 1,169 yards, 11 touchdowns, and he averaged that outstanding five yards per carry for a rookie and then he also caught 39 passes for 299 yards and one touchdown jonathan taylor was better in his rookie season than marlon mack has ever been for the indianapolis Colts, especially the year three where he finally cracked a thousand yards you feel me and i know i may sound like i'm bashing marlon mack i'm not trying to bash marlon mack i think marlon mack is a solid running back he's a serviceable running back and it's good that they brought him back in the offseason. But let's be real here. They brought in Jonathan Taylor to bring some type of star power to the backfield. And that's what Jonathan Taylor can do. And don't get me wrong. Jonathan Taylor got off to a slow start. He was just doing the right things like hitting the holes. He was showing flashes of having good vision by being able to cut back into open holes. And fight through tackle attempts. Being a physical back. He was able to go out there and catch the ball out the backfield and make some things happen from time to time. Don't get me wrong, though. He definitely had his moments out there where he looked like his former college self. But, you know, he had to just go out there and get better with Tom, and that's exactly what he did. Jonathan Taylor was able to go out there and just be a physical back for the Colts and be able to plow for yards that he wanted consistently. He was able to go out there every week and make it hard for defenders to get him down. And you still might not get him down at the end of the day. Don't get me wrong. That defender got his get back on the exact next play. Don't get me wrong. But you understand what I'm saying here. Jonathan Taylor is going to go out there and plow and fight through defenders for every yard that he could possibly get on every play. And that's the type of running back that you want in your team. And he can also break tackles and slip off dudes. You feel me? Like he's not always running and plowing through dudes. He can definitely break tackles simply, and that's good to have at the running back position. Marlon Mack, he was able to go out there and do things like this as well. Don't get me wrong. Marlon Mack was able to break tackles from here and there. But what Marlon Mack was not doing was being physical. Marlon Mack was not going out there, lowering his shoulder on defenders, running dudes over. Marlon Mack was actually ducking action. You can go watch the old video. Marlon Mack was ducking action. Jonathan Taylor ain't ducking no action. D Jonathan Taylor is coming every single play. He's going to challenge you when he needs to. Tr trust me, that's who he is. If he can run you over, he feel like he needs to, he is going to do it. He's not scared, and he shouldn't be scared. He has the body type to be this type of dude. And if he can't do anything, Jonathan Taylor has displayed on numerous occasions that he can hit you with some juke moves and also going about his business as well. Another thing I noticed about Jonathan Taylor as the season went on is that he became sharper with his vision to the point where he can prove he has good vision. Right here, you got the linebacker in the hole, so he avoids that hole, right? This is the hole he initially wants to hit, but he cannot hit this hole anymore because he sees quickly that those defenders are blocking their man over towards that hole, and based off the way the other lineman is, he's pushing his lineman to the opposite side. That means the other hole's opening up, and he cuts right into it, and he's able to make this a bigger play than many other running backs would have even made this play. Another running back would have got stopped in the backfield. Same thing here. Jonathan Taylor breaks and tackles in the backfield like he always does. And as you see, it's crowded where Jonathan Taylor is. Luckily, in the middle, it's a man that's blocking his man towards the pile where it would be wide open. So Jonathan Taylor, he cuts into that middle, runs right off the backside of his teammate, and he's able to pick up a lot of yards that he probably shouldn't have got. And another thing I noticed about Jonathan Taylor is that his outside speed on runs is pretty good, you know? Rather than a sweep, rather than a pitch, rather he out the shotgun, he can hit the outside and really pick up some yards. Same thing right here, just off the pitch. Even though it was like a fake pitch, 
he had a decent amount of speed right there. And then when you speak in general, rather it's an outside run or an inside run, Jonathan Taylor showed numerous times that he does have breakaway speed. May not always be a touchdown, but he can break away. And he also showed that he can be a threat in the passing game out the backfield by simply catching passes. You feel me? Doesn't matter if it's a halfback um, wheel. Doesn't matter if it's a catch in the flats, a screen. He's not lining up at slot and running routes, but he can catch the ball out the backfield. And that's good to have. He's not your Austin Eckler or anything like that, but he can catch the ball. But I do want to commend Jonathan Taylor for taking care of that ball. He did fumble on this play right here. And it did cost his team a whole touchdown, but Jonathan Taylor was known for fumbling a lot in college, and that was one of his concern. Well, one of the concerns surrounding his name coming into the draft, and that's probably why he slipped in the draft. But he only fumbled one time last year compared to his 18 total college career fumbles that he had, which is why I was concerned in the first place surrounding his name. But in general, you know, I definitely want to commend him on that. I feel like Jonathan Taylor, despite having a slow start to the season, for obvious reasons such as having a short offseason and stuff like that, I feel like as he continued to get his feet wet and just go out there and play, he got better with time. And I say around week 10, really week 13 in my opinion, but I'll let you slide for the week 10. From there on out, he turned it up a notch and he showed way more consistency with his game and skills at that point in my opinion but other than that he was never a scrub just got off to a slow start always had his moments in the beginning but it was just a slow start in my opinion but other than that i'm not worried about jonathan taylor always knew he was going to be one of the best running backs out of this draft class i thought he was the best running back out of this draft class and i still think he does have the potential to be the best running back out of this draft class but as far as the rookies you know when you go off based off skill set you know, not only just yards, but skill set. Jonathan Taylor may have had the best rookie season as a running back. And then for number two, if I'm not leaving anybody out, I think I'd give it to Antonio Gibson over DeAndre Swift. Then I'd give it to DeAndre Swift. Then I'd swing down to like Cam Akers and stuff like that. But Jonathan Taylor, he was solid. I definitely think he has a future in his league. Definitely has star potential. He just has to keep working in the Colts. They got to take care of him, man. That's about it. But next year, opportunity should be through the roof. You know, he definitely should catch more passes out the backfield, even though they got Naeem Himes, whatever his name is. Um, touches may go down because Marlon Mack is going to be back and healthy. But other than that, it doesn't really matter. He probably take like 20 touches. That's about it. But Jonathan Taylor still go crack his yards off, man. But that's all I got to say. Let me know what y'all think about Jonathan Taylor in the comment section. What you think about the Colts? Do you think Jonathan Taylor is the best running back out of this draft class? Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and I got some more content coming soon.